Hello everybody. Just for fun, let's go through my recent HTPC or Media PC build um, that I just completed to sit underneath the TV and play my media. Here are the components. Basically it's in a Silverstone GDO9 box. We've got a Corsair power supply. We've got an Asus MicroATX motherboard with an i5 processor. We've got 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is completely over the top, but never mind. A, an SSD, a green hard drive as a Western Digital one, a quiet CPU fan because I want the thing to be quiet, and a quiet Noctua case fan to try and keep things quiet as well. And in this box here is a bog standard Blu-ray player Pioneer. Okay, and of course I've got a copy of Windows 8.1 to run on it um, when it's completed. Cup of coffee, two screwdrivers, and we're ready to go. Let's have a look inside the case box, get the case out, and have a look at it. I like Silverstone HTPC cases because they tend to look quite good under the TV. They don't scream computer at you, and they're fairly understated, not too many flashing lights, as you can see. This one's got room for three decent sized fans and plenty of slots. I want to make this a gaming HTPC, so I will put a graphics card in at some point, so I want plenty of good airflow. A little plastic ducket for the screws, always a good idea. Get the lid off. Okay, it's fairly well made case, um, looks fairly good, um, and structurally is quite strong. As you can see, you get a whole bunch of stuff with it to help you make things together. I uh, don't need to tell you that I've speeded this up pretty quickly just to so you get the general idea. What I do here is I'm taking out the bracket which holds the five and a quarter and the three and a half inch drives. Uh, some little rubber grommets that uh, try and keep the noise down there. Okay, there's the bracket. Put that to one side. First job is get power supply and motherboard fitted. As you can see, the case comes with uh, the front connectors and all the annoying little connectors that go with the power switches and other things that need to be connected to the motherboard. It has a fan built in. I probably will use it because I've read that it's quite quiet. Here's a CPU cooler, which I bought specifically because it's supposed to be a good performer, it's low profile so it doesn't take up a lot of space and suitable for HTPCs, nice and quiet. Okay, what you get is you get a little bracket you can see on the table, it's got the usual connectors and hopefully it's going to be easy to fit. Okay, well let me tell you, after having fitted it, it's not easy to fit. I certainly wouldn't recommend um, this fan, the Zolman fan that I've fitted here because it is very fiddly and awkward to fit and to get the backing plate onto the back of the motherboard screw everything into place was extremely awkward and inconvenient there are better designs out there um, I think probably, now I've got it, I'm going to keep it but I think in future, or if you're buying one yourself, go for a different design anyway, hopefully it will be a nice performer and nice and quiet as you can see, I've already fitted the RAM and the CPU to the motherboard Okay, now I'm going to have to adjust the upstands inside the case because I'm not using a full ATX motherboard, I'm using a micro ATX one, so I'm just going to put the upstanders in the correct holes in the case bottom so the motherboard sits on all its mounting points correctly. And that's important because I want a nice solid base to install things. My micro ATX motherboard has three PCI slots so I can use expansion slots if I want and I'm also obviously going to be fitting a graphics card to it. Okay, so motherboard resting inside the case now. I've fitted the back plate already and you can see the power supply is installed. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm using this little yellow prong thing I've got, which I'll show you in a minute, to put the screws, just a couple of threads on each slot in the motherboard upstanders so the, that I can tighten them up later with a screwdriver. This is a really useful little gadget I use sometimes when I'm trying to pick things up with big fiddly hands. As you can see, Handy for picking things up, especially if you drop things inside the case while you're manufacturing or assembling things. Okay, tighten these screws up, give the motherboard a nice firm platform on which to sit. Incidentally, you can't see from this angle, but I have actually also installed the Noctua case fan in one of the fan slots that you can see closest to us. Okay, let's have a little look inside the case then, as I've said, 
knocks your uh, the CPU coolers installed, got the RAM installed, got the, the PSU installed. I've connected out of the motherboard connectors to the switches and other stuff on the front. Um, I've got the new Noctua fan installed and plugged in. And uh, it's not beautiful, but there's a reasonable amount of space for airflow inside the case, which I'm pleased about. And the airflow, I'm hoping, is going to come in for these fans and then exit out the back. So positive pressure inside the case, not too much dust buildup, hopefully. Okay, here you can see I've fitted the five and a quarter inch Blu-ray drive and the Western Digital Green hard drive to the bracket. This case is a little bit short on mounting points for drives, um, so I will need to find somewhere else for my SSD to go, but at least I've got those two ready to go back into the case um, when the time is right. Okay, well I've had a good look at it, and looking obviously for a place to install my SSD. I'm not sure how easy this is, this is gonna be able to, for you to see on the camera, just in the corner there where you can see the 850 EVO, I managed to find two suitable mounting holes for vertically mounting my SSD. It's not perfect, and as you can see, the cable management is pretty awful. But that's the luxury of having a nice big case. I can afford to be a little bit messy and not ultra sophisticated about the cable management. Still have some decent airflow and space for my other components inside the case. I have in the past used much smaller HTPC cases and requires a level of detail and discipline on cable management that I just don't want or can't be bothered with, to be honest. Okay, I've got my drives fitted now in their cradle, got my SSD in, just check the fans spin freely. And I think what we'll do is we'll connect it up to a screen that I have here, just check on the first boot that we get to the BIOS screen up and things are looking healthy before I start doing anything else or putting the top back on the case. Okay, I've got it connected up to my screen. As you can see, we're seeing some signs of life. The BIOS recognizes my drives and the memory and everything looks okay there. We'll just check the fans are running. The CPU temperatures look okay and the cooling is operating correctly. Um, so we'll run this for a little while just to check that everything seems to be okay. Okay, good. What I can also tell you at this stage um, is that I'm very pleased with the level of noise, which is extremely low. It's a nice quiet HTPC, which is what you want. You don't want lots of howling gales and noisy fans um, blowing away underneath your TV while you're trying to watch a movie. In case you're curious, the build time is about four hours, another hour to install the OS. Okay, this video is not really about installing Windows, but uh, suffice to say you just stick the DVD in the drive and off you go, more or less. Um, so here is the unit actually sat in my TV cabinet. Um, what I can tell you is that it's barely audible unless you get close. It's almost silent, but uh, only when you get very close could you hear it above whatever the noises there are in the room. So I'm very pleased about that. I'm using a Bluetooth keyboard, some Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. This is actually another PC, and I wanted to show you, some of you may be wondering why I didn't install a TV card inside my HTPC, and the answer is because I'm using a server to, to record my TV, and the server is a media portal server. Here is a brief video of the server running with the four tuners. Um, I'll probably make a different video of the installation of my quad tuner card that I recently bought. This is the server which sits in the office. Um, so the, the PC that we've just put together really just gets its uh, TV data from this server, which is in another room in the house via the network. And I've done that deliberately because I want to try and distribute my media TV and other stuff around the house to lots of different TVs, this one included. Okay, so that's the server itself without going into too much detail. And let's have a quick look now at the, um, the PC in operation. Okay, so here we are. You can see uh, a rough idea of the specifications there. Windows 8, everything seems to be running smoothly. Temperatures are good, and uh, with no issues with drivers or anything else. Basically, all this computer does really is run the client, which I'm using Kodi, and play the odd game. Um, I'll show you in a minute. So there's the graphics card that I installed, the 750 Ti, which um, seems to do the job pretty well and keep things nice and quiet. 
As I mentioned, I'm using Kodi as my front end for my HTPC. Let's fire up Kodi. So you can see that it connects to the server and downloads a bunch of data. I'm also using an Ambilight system, so I won't show you that, but uh, I have ambient lighting on my TV, which is run from here. This is the TV menu. You can see it's got some scheduled recordings for tonight. Not mine, I might add. And uh, we can just, let's just check to see that recorded uh, live TV is in operation. There you go. The live TV. We'll bring up the EPG and change the channels. What I'm pleased with is, even though this is over a network, very little lag. Not so that it would cause you any problems anyway. Here's the EPG. Do a channel change. Some bizarre advert. Sorry about this. <laughs> anyway, you can see that things are working pretty well. And generally speaking, although I'm still getting used to the interface, I'm finding Kodi to be pretty good front end for HTTP use after migrating from Windows. Windows. Choice, we hand select our and the family seem to be just Let's exit that. Let's have a quick look at a game running on the system because it is supposed to be a gaming system. The main game I play on here is FIFA with my son. See FIFA running that very smooth. Graphics are maxed out, no problems at all. In fact, this HTPC is really over the top for what I, my requirements are. It's really the gaming that drives the um, higher spec, the more memory, the better CPU, and the graphics card. But having said that, it does the job admirably. There you go. Hope you enjoyed this quick look at my HTPC. Give me a shout if you've got any questions.